Um, as you just heard, a lot of people think that genome engineering is a new discovery. So if you take a few minutes to read this. So in fact, it's not a new discovery. Uh, people, scientists specifically, have been dreaming about uh, precisely engineering DNA since the structure was elucidated in the 1950s. And so what I'm going to walk you through today is what precision biosciences does. So if you look at a relatively broad definition, genome editing or genome engineering is a process of manipulating the function of a living cell or organism by, mod by directly modifying chromosomal DNA sequences. And in a classical sense, um, the creation of, of transgenic or GMO plants has been going on since the 1980s, so it's not new in that sense. What's really, what's really exciting now, as we just heard, is there are a lot of new state-of-the-art technologies that have been developed just in the last five to ten years, which allow you to very precisely um, modify DNA sequence at a very specific location, and that's using these new tools such as the Arcus endonuclease, which I'm going to talk about today. So some of the things that you can do with a genome editing tool, such as an endonuclease, are shown in this slide. One, of course, is you can do gene knockout, where this double-stranded break that's created by this enzyme um, allows mutagenic repair and the deletion and sometimes insertion of bases, but the, the end product is the knockout of that gene function. Another thing you can do is gene knock-in, where that double-stranded break and the um, providing a cargo or repair DNA allows you to actually insert DNA into a location um, by homologous recombination. So that's very valuable. And then finally, that we have shown here is something called gene surgery. That's, again, using a repair DNA to insert or change the sequence in a very specific location in the genome, in many cases to um, repair a defective allele or potentially um, introduce a new variant enzyme. Okay, so what does precision biosciences do? Well, they have a technology called Arcus. Um, it's based on a homing, homing endonuclease or meganuclease. Um, the original source is an enzyme called ICRE1. This is an enzyme derived from Chlamydomonas algae. And that enzyme in the algae uh, is extremely site specific. It cuts once and only once in the genome and cuts at a very slow catalytic rate. And the difficulty with that native enzyme, this is a native gene editing system, is it's very hard to engineer new. DNA specificity into that enzyme. It also functions as a dimer, a homodimer, and so it recognizes a palindromic sequence of about 22 base pairs. And what precision biosciences has developed is something called the ARC nuclease. This is an activity-optimized, redesignable Cre enzyme. This enzyme still retains the extremely high DNA binding specificity of the original iCre1 enzyme. But now, through the engineering that's been done to it, it has a very high and adjustable catalytic rate. Um, also through the uh, in, sil in silico design techniques and the other methods that have been developed at Precision, now it's very easy for the scientists there to engineer new DNA binding specificities. So you can target almost any sequence in the genome um, by these uh, redesigned enzymes. Another key feature is that it's a monomeric enzyme now. It's encoded by a relatively small gene. And as it's designed, you have a blue domain and a green domain shown here, and each one of those now can recognize a specific 9 to 11 base pair sequence. So it no longer depends on a, a homodimer that recognizes a palindrome. You can design each one of these pieces to recognize a unique sequence. So this technology has actually been widely used throughout the ag biotech industry. Not a lot of it's published, but we'll show you some examples here. And, and these are some of the announced partnerships that have been done uh, in ag biotech. Um, obviously, you guys know all these names, Bayer Crop Science, Syngenta, BASF, Nova Synthetics, uh, Pioneer Hybrid, Denzinger Innovations, Agravita, and all of you recognize the connections there to North Carolina. Um, as well, the technology was actually developed um, by scientists working at Duke University Medical Center, uh, Jeff Smith and, and Derek Jantz doing work there, and the intellectual property is actually from Duke University, so there's a very strong North Carolina connection um, to this technology. The table on the right is sort of an up-to-date uh, uh, summary of the types of loci that have been modified in plants, and as you can tell, uh, the, the, 
the choice of the plants that are used and, the, and sort of the target genes are determined by these partners. And that's why there's such a heavy emphasis on maize and soybean, the key row crops. But you can also see that it's been um, demonstrated to work quite well in a, in a variety of other plants, including uh, petunia and castor and apple and potato. So it has a very good history of performance in a wide variety of plants. And another important point is that you know, a lot of people think about um, genome, energy, genome en engineering as knocking out genes, but it's also been used uh, very effectively in terms of gene knock-ins, and that's important in ag biotech in sort of the classic sense of inserting transgenes um, that have value. So I'm just going to walk you through three or four examples of, of where this technology has been used and applied. These are published examples, so you can go look these up if you want to later on. Um, the first example here is an example of introducing a trait by gene knock-in. This is a collaboration between Pioneer DuPont and Precision Biosciences. And the idea here was to create male sterile plants um, by targeted mutagenesis of a specific male sterility gene called MS26 um, by a redesigned IOCRE-1 homing endonuclease. And unfortunately, because of time, I won't have uh, any time to go through all the details, but the bottom line is shown here is by creating an endonuclease that will recognize a target site within this particular gene and introducing that meganuclease, uh, the scientists at uh, DuPont Pioneer were able to create maize lines that now have pollen-free corn tassels. Um, and so you wonder why, what that, what's the purpose of that? Um, it could be used actually in hybrid seed production where you want one parent not to be able to produce pollen and pollinate itself. So that's one example of a gene knockout. The next example is a case of gene knock-in. Um, this is a collaboration between Bear Crop Sciences and Precision. And the goal here was targeted molecular trait stacking, in this case in cotton, um, through inducing a double-stranded break. Um, again, I'm not going to go through the details. There's just not time to do that. Um, so these are cotton plants that have been sprayed with, a, with an inhibitor of the HPPD enzyme. You can see the ones on the left are nice and green. The ones on the right are sort of brown. Um, the critical point of this um, project was that Bayer had an elite cotton variety that already had a insect tolerance or insect resistance gene and a herbicide tolerance gene. And this enzyme was designed to introduce two more herbicide genes right next to those existing genes. So it's an example of putting things where you want them to go. And that means you can um, breed those four traits as a single genetic locus. So that was a very valuable um, result of this, of this collaboration. Uh, the third example here, which I'll really skim through fast, is, is just to say that you can do simultaneous knockout knock-ins. Um, in this case, a herbicide tolerance gene shown there in yellow was flanked by homology regions, and it was introduced into another male sterility locus called MS45. And the end result of that um, process was that herbicide tolerant plants were created that were also male sterile because the gene went into where it was targeted. The final example I'll, I'll, I'll describe here is a, um, a non-standard transformation method that was used to utilize this technology. This is a collaboration between Danzinger Innovations in Israel and Precision Biosciences. And the method that was used here was to transiently express a virally derived meganuclease in planta, in this case petunia, to generate inherited genomic deletions. So this is a little bit a different way of delivery here, but what was used was a tobacco rattle virus vector, um, which contains a meganuclease and a DS red marker gene, and that virus is used to infect petunia plants, and they can follow the infection process by looking at where DS red fluoresces in the plant. And due to the expression of this meganuclease, they were able to knock out one of the genes that uh, controls anthocyanin, anthocyanin pigmentation. And you can see, I hope, in that picture that the uh, flower on the right is a different color, slightly modified, but it's clearly a different color. Um, so that was another cool example of using this technology and sort of a unique way of delivering that, that DNA. So here's my last slide. I just wanted to quickly summarize um, some features of the Arcus technology. So it's a powerful, precise genome engineering technology that's based actually on a, a natural gene editing system. Um, 
The synthetic in silico enzyme design allows targeting of almost any gene with the actual recognition, recognition site being about 22 base pairs. It can be optimized for different applications. You can engineer it to have higher or lower catalytic activity, uh, different binding affinity attributes, ability to work at different temperatures. So there's a lot of cool um, engineering going on behind the scenes at Precision to, to tailor-made these enzymes for specific applications. Um, another important point about this technology is that it's actually a single domain architect architecture with a reg relatively small gene. Um, and that's important in a lot of the uh, uh, gene therapy applications that are going on in, in humans and, and mammals. Um, a lot of those systems require a very, uh, they utilize viral vectors that have a very payload limitation. So this is actually a relatively small gene that will fit into those viral delivery vectors. And we have lots of examples of technical success in human cells, animal cells, plant cells, across multiple industries. Unfortunately, we don't have time to talk a lot about them today, but I'm just trying to give you a good flavor about um, the success of this technology, how it's been used. It's actually been used quite a bit in ag biotechnology. And another very critical point is that um, precision has freedom to operate with this technology. Um, there's at least 25 issue patents related to this. So we have this proprietary uh, technology that has um, broad applications in ag biotech. That is it.